Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 5 for chapter 5, and the topic for the chapter is the Laplace transform. In this video, we start looking at the concept of inverse Laplace transform. Let's go through the definition first. So for the inverse Laplace transform, the definition is defined kind of a, um, in terms of the Laplace transform. We don't have an, an explicit formula to compute the inverse transform by anything, integration or whatever, because uh, we remember the Laplace transform is defined as an integral. But for the inverse transform, we defined as follows. The inverse transform of a function capital F of s equal to little f of t if the capital F of s is the Laplace transform of f of t. Okay, so um, basically, if you have an f of t and you computed the Laplace transform of of it is capital F of S, then the reversed relation that is uh, to connect the capital F of S to um, little f of t, that's called the inverse transform. Okay, so because of this definition, we um, don't have an explicit way of computing the inverse transform. The main technique um, we use here to find the inverse transform is uh, what I wrote here find our way back. So I'll explain in detail through examples. Okay, so our first example, um, we want to find inverse transform. So this is the notation, Laplace inverse transform with the power negative one and of the function three over s squared plus four. So how do we find our way back? So if we look at the tables of Laplace transform that we have computed so far, we have collected so far, and look at this function on the list of those that we have done, in, in particular, looking at the denominators, this will be s square plus 2 square, and uh, with a constant on the top. So that looks very much like the Laplace transform of a sine function. So we'll start from there. Okay, so in order to match it to be the sine function, then I need s square plus 2 square, and then I need 2 on the um, numerator. But I have 3 on the numerator, then I need to multiply the whole thing by a factor 3 over 2, then this equals to that. Okay, because here then 2 will cancel 2, I'll just end up with 3. So now I have written the right hand side as a constant times this function, which we know which f of t generated this transform. And then the next thing we do is to use the linear property of and the inverse transform. It follows from the linear property of the Laplace transform itself. That is, a constant can be taken out. And then I will look for the inverse transform for this function. Okay, so as uh, we have said before, we constructed this function such that the ft generated this one is a sine function. So we'll have sine 2t here and multiply by the constant 3 over 2. Okay, so um, this is our first example. So a, a key thing to point out is um, when you want to find your way back, what is important is the denominator here. You will check the denominator um, and check on the table those few functions that we have and to see that possibly which one this would match. So here we have s squared plus 2 square, and then the only thing matches this is sine and cosine. And then you look at the numerator, and then you see that I actually have a sine function. Okay, so here's our next example. I want to find the inverse transform of uh, 
this function 2 over s plus 5 to the power 4. So what could be a good candidate? Okay, so here's the way of thinking. So look at the denominator. I have an s plus 5 to the power 4. And s doesn't appear anywhere else. That's the only place where s appear, and it appears as s plus 5. So immediately I think about the shift theorem number one, which would shift the transform function by some a unit. Here's negative five. Okay, then I would consider this whole thing s plus five just as s because I can shift it by just multiply by exponential function in the in the um, function f of t. So I basically just have s to the power 4 with some constant on the top. So check that denominator on the functions that we know. We see that that's the polynomial. Okay. So keep that in mind and then we'll start our um, work. Okay. So we see that in order to fit in um, a polynomial which has like something like s to the power 4 here, then on the top we will need 3 factorial, which is 6. So if I put 6 here, then I need to multiply by a factor 1 over 3 so that I'll get 2, right? So I can manipulate in this way. Okay, so that is the first step. Okay, so next apply the linear property. I'll take out 1 over 3 outside. I'll look for inverse transform of this. Now I write 6 as 3 factorial. So I know that this one looks good now. So the next step is to apply the shift theorem number 1, and which says that this shift in the S is um, contributed associated with corresponds to multiplying by an exponential function. So e to the negative 5t. If you multiply by that, then you can shift it back and then you'll be finding the inverse transform of 3 factorial over s to the 4. So s plus 5 becomes just s. Okay, so after all the manipulations we have done. So we see now that this inverse transform and we know that this matches the function t to the power 3 and that's actually what we were aiming at to make it into that. Okay, And then the inverse transform is this function. Okay, so um, recap. So we used um, we first analyze this quite a bit before we start the manipulation. And uh, after writing it in this form, then we did the linearity, put it out, and then we use the shift theorem number one, change s into uh, s plus five into s, and then this comes out nice and easy. Okay, now let's look at our next example. Um, s plus 1 over s squared plus 4. So um, what would that be? Let's look at the denominator is s squared plus 2 squared. So we know that it could be um, sine function and or cosine function depending on the numerator. And let's look at the numerator. So the numerator has both um, s term and the constant term. And the s term will contribute to a cosine and the constant term contribute to a sine. Okay, so look at that, keep all those thoughts in your mind and we can start to manipulate. Okay, so basically I will write this um, fraction here into two terms. The first term keeping only s and take the inverse transform of that. And the second term keep only one. And then I know if I want to match it with a sine function, I actually need a two on the top. So I multiply the whole thing by a half and I put a half in the front and then I put a two on the top. Okay, now um, it's all quite clear. Then the first term corresponds to a cosine two t and the second term is a half times sine two t. 
Okay, one more example. I want to find the inverse transform of s plus 1 over s squared minus 4. So again, from experience, we'll analyze the denominator. Here is s squared minus 4, which is 2 squared. And if I look into the those functions that I know, I see that it doesn't match any of them. Nobody has s squared minus some number square. Okay. Then I know that um, this denominator actually can be factorized. Let's factorize it and see what happens. So this can be factorized as s minus 2 times s plus 2. So actually now in the denominator I have two terms. One is s minus 2, one is s plus 2. So um, we see that um, if these were alone on the denominator, then this um, will give me exponential function with uh, different rates, right? But uh, now they are a product, so what can one do? So um, I think a similar thing we have encountered in calculus when we try to integrate fractions. Um, there is a technique called um, and partial fraction and let's go through that okay so partial fraction says that this fraction can be written um, so the product here in the denominator we can break it up into two separate terms each one takes one of the denominator and with some constant a here and constant b here and then this holds for all s and then we'll try to find the constant a and b um okay so um i am not sure um that is something you have on your fingertips so let me write out some details okay so we can write this back into a whole um fraction by joining this and then what we would have is the following so i'm going to write out um this would be if i write the numerator out so i have s plus one equal to and this a term is multiplied by s plus two and then the b term is multiplied by s minus two okay and this equation holds for all numbers of s and i need to find capital a and b so a simple way to find the number a or b is just plug in a number of s to see if it gives me a or b so let's say i want to find um what the a value is so i can plug in a s turn so that the b turn disappears that is i can set s equal to two then this term is zero then i get three here and i get four here so a is three over four okay very quick and then now i want to find the b well you can use the same trick you can put it in s equal to negative 2 and the equation has to hold and this term is gone so if you have s negative 2 this is negative 1 and this is negative 4 so b is uh, 1 over 4 okay so you quickly get these two numbers okay i hope this was helpful Okay, now we can put in the numbers, so the inverse transform of this is the inverse transform of two terms, so here is A, here is B, as we have computed, and then now it becomes simple, because uh, we can take inverse of each term, and then each term is some constant over S minus a number, which is an exponential function, so this first one gives us 3 over 4, e to the 2t the 2 comes from there and then the second one gives me a quarter e to the negative 2t comes from negative of this number okay so um yeah so um partial fraction so a comment on that is um make sure we are comfortable in doing partial fractions because later on that becomes a key step in finding inverse Laplace transform and in the end to solve the differential equation.
okay so that's all the examples i have for this video and and that's all the examples i have as uh, inverse laplace transform and uh, next time we will apply all these into um, solving initial value problems for differential equations okay so i hope you enjoyed this one and i'll see you next time